Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of order of operations and prime factorization. This is standard 6.7a in the great state of Texas. and We are using item number 17 off the redesign practice online star test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So what is the prime factorization of 126? We need to know what that means. And if you know prime and if you know composite, take a look at these four answer selections. There's actually only one answer that it could possibly be. We could eliminate three incorrect answers and move on without even doing the prime factorization if we knew about prime and composite. So let's see what makes this problem not so difficult. So prime factorization. Okay, so let's talk about what that is first. Then we'll get into that distinction of prime and composite that really should help us. When we're looking at prime factorization, we should be thinking of this word prime. Okay, so when we have a prime number, it's a number that has only two factors. Right, that's we're dealing with multiplication because factors are the, the numbers that we multiply to get a product. One and itself. Okay, so the number... 2 is prime. The only way to multiply to get the number 2 is 1 and 2. 1 in itself. The only way to get to the number 5 is 1 times 5. 6, I can do 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. So that's the opposite, right? So the opposite is going to be composite. So composite is when we have 3 or more factors. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our 126. I always view it as making a Christmas tree. So I'll turn it green for my Christmas tree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think, how can I multiply to get to 126? I'm just going to keep going until the only numbers I have left are going to be prime. Okay, so I it's an even number, so I can do 2 times something, right? So 2 times 60. Three. All right, so once I get my prime number, I circle it. So that's kind of like the ornament on a Christmas tree. So I, you can't factor two times one. All you're going to two, you're only going to get two times one, and you just keep repeating and repeating. Now, 63, there's a few different ways I can get there. It, it, it can be divided by three, but I can also do, let's do a nine and seven. Okay, now, seven is prime. The only way to get to 7 is 1 times 7. 9, I could do 3 times 3. Okay. And then once you have all circles, that means you're done. What you need to do is you need to rewrite it in order, right? So I've got a 2 times. Now there's two different 3's. I'm not going to write times 3 times 3. I'm just going to do times 3 squared. That's how you correctly show it in prime factorization. The exponent shows you how many 3's there are, because that just means 3 times itself 2 times, and then you'd bring that 7, right? So then it looks like, there we go, our answer here is B. Now, why was that so easy? Well, here's the problem. I wanted prime numbers. Check out 6. 6 is not prime, because I can get 6 with 2 times 3. A prime number, the only way you can get to that number is 1 times itself, which means 6 is not prime. Neither is 21. I can get to 21 by 7 and 3. So both of those are composite, which means it's not a prime factorization. Look at this 3 times 42. 3 is good. The only way to get to 3 is 3 times 1, but 42. 42, I can break that down it's it's even so i can always do a two times something two times 21 and then three times seven so 42 is not prime it's composite that's the problem now three squared is good because three is prime and you can have an exponent but 14 is not prime it's composite two times seven works in addition to one times 14. So just looking at it, I was looking at A, C, and D, and I was thinking composite, composite, composite. I don't even need to do the prime factorization. B is the only one that has all prime numbers, and that is our answer.